Welcome back to SourceFed, I'm Meg Turney. As we've been covering this week, CES is well underway, and one of the most talked about subjects on the show floor and online is steam machines. They seem to come in every shape and size, and with a wide array of differing specs. So today I'll be running down the 13 brand new beauties that have just been unveiled. Buckle up kids, it's about to be a mess of specs. Up first, Dell has confirmed that it will be releasing a Steam machine under its Alienware brand, powered by an Intel processor and featuring an NVIDIA graphics card. But that's pretty much all we know about it so far. Alternate, on the other hand, has given us a peek at all the goods, revealing that their offering will rock a quad-core 3.2 GHz Intel Core i5 processor, an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 760 graphics card, and a 1TB solid-state hybrid drive. It'll run 1339 and release later this year. The next spa will also feature an Intel i5 processor and, you guessed it, an NVIDIA Nvidia GeForce GTX 760 graphics card. I really should have made a drinking game out of how many of these rigs feature the exact same specs. Or maybe every time I say Steam Machine, that'd probably kill you. CyberPower PC will offer two Steam Machines, drink, which I think are really pretty. Kind of a sucker for the black-white combo. I covered them earlier this week when they were announced, so click down here for those specs. Digital Storm is calling their Steam Machine the Bolt 2, and we're hearing it's powered by, quote, a high-end Intel processor and an NVIDIA graphics card. No word on which processor or card, so hold off on that shot. It is liquid-cooled, which sets it apart from the pack, but doesn't come bundled with the Steam controller, which for the $18.99 starting point price tag is kind of a huge bummer. Falcon Northwest isn't pulling any punches with their offerings, which can start as low as $17.99 and go as high as 6 Gs. The system will feature up to 16 gigabytes of RAM and up to 6 terabytes of storage. It'll also feature an NVIDIA GeForce GTX Titan graphics card, which I almost got for my new beast because it's so pretty. No word yet on when that hustle hit the market. Gigabyte Steam Machine comes in two flavors, one powered by a quad-core 3.2 gigahertz Intel Core i5 processor, which may sound familiar, and one rocking the i7. Both models feature an Intel Iris Pro 5200 graphics card and a slew of rather impressive specs, but no word on pricing or release date. The Scan NC10 Steam Machine is a little underwhelming with its dual-core 2.4 gig gigahertz Intel i3 processor and a 500 gigabyte hard drive. Web Halen's offering, on the other hand, features Intel's i7 processor and an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 780. That's my baby. Plus 16 gigs of RAM and a one terabyte solid state hybrid drive. It'll arrive later this year and set you back no less than 1500 big ones. Zotac held back on details for its Steam machine, but did reveal it'll be powered by an Intel processor and an NVIDIA graphics card. I'm betting it's the i5-760 combo, so drink up. I buy power is bucking the Intel trend with a quad-core AMD Athlon X4740 processor and an AMD Radeon R7260X graphics card, 4 gigs of RAM, and a 500 gigabyte hard drive. Plus, it starts at the low price of $499. Main Gear Spark is also rocking an AMD with a 3.1 gigahertz A8 processor and a Radeon R9 M275X graphics card. Material.net's base Steam machine has an Intel Core i5 processor and an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 760 graphics card. Shot. But you can upgrade to an i7 processor and two, count them, two GTX Titan graphics cards. Because one beastly card is just never enough. Not to be outdone, Origin PC sees your dual titans, Material.net, and raises you a liquid cooling system as well. In true Origin PC fashion, pretty much every bit will be customizable, and their machine will dual boot Windows 7 or 8 and Steam OS. Sadly, no word on price point or release dates. This high. All right, spec spew over. For more on how Steam machines could change the face of gaming, our own Trisha Hirschberger is on the floor. Trisha? Hey guys, I'm here with Nathaniel from Valve. How are you doing today, Nathaniel? Good. How are you? Excellent. I'm actually, I'm really good because we're standing in front of all the Steam Machine lineup right here at the Valve booth. Tell me a little bit about Steam Machines, where they are now, and what this means for everyone at home. Like what the announcements at CES means for those folks. We just uh, unveiled last night a bunch of the first partners uh, for Steam Machines. And uh, right here you have a selection of a bunch of the ones that are ready to be announced at CES. We'll all run the Steam OS natively. Mm -hmm and uh, we'll be able to run your entire Steam uh, catalog of games by streaming and home streaming as well. So uh, there's a bunch of uh, a bunch of power to the, uh, the upcoming Steam machines. A big thing that's important to us at Valve is openness. So uh, one thing you'll notice is we uh, are working with a lot of partners and uh, there is a wide offering of, uh, of different hardware as well as 
uh, it will still do all of the things that Steam does. Workshop, integration, it will be open. At the end of the day, these are all just great pieces of hardware that uh, you as the consumer have the choice of how you want to run your games yeah. uh, and, and what's best for you in your home. I have been using the controller for the last year, uh, going through all of our different phases with the controller, uh, working mostly with the gaming partners, getting their feedback. It's a symmetrical controller, yeah. and, uh, so it can be set up for someone that's left-handed or right-handed. Not like a... Uh, it's not like a traditional touch surface that you're used to with uh, with mobile, uh, okay. in that it actually gives you feedback. You feel when you move and the way that it changes. The other thing that's really cool about it um, is the fact that uh, the actual bindings of the controller um, are crowdsourced. Customers are going to be able to go in and they're going to be able to change the bindings of the controller, upload it, and then write details about it. Hey, this is the best left-handed you know setup, yeah. and then people can rate those up, and then they'll be able to. Um, it'll by default grab the highest rate. And then, uh, and right now, the most exciting thing is we've shipped out 300 of these out to customers, and they're giving us feedback. Those lucky beta testers. They are lucky. Yeah. <laughs> and the, the goal from that is to actually get their feedback and actually implement that into the design for the actual go-to-market product. Now, do you anticipate a lot of people that are just resisting change, getting their Bluetooth keyboard and mouse, and sitting down in front of their Steam machine? <laughs> they, they could. And, and, and honestly, if that is their uh, if that is their choice of input method, then we are totally supportive of it. With all the different steam machines that are made by all the different manufacturers there's a big range in price point do you see the higher end machines affecting gameplay in a big way uh it's, it's hard to tell honestly mm -hmm. i mean i think the the power uh, of the different uh, oems working mm -hmm. on the different spec is just they know their customers best mm -hmm. and so if they are like hey we have a niche customer that wants a really high high-end uh, computer well then they can make that like so they sure. and they can also react if they find that hey one model's not selling then they can react and change what they're offering so uh, it'll be hard to tell I mean I think we're we're just in the business of creating uh, hardware and software that customers want and then mm -hmm. just like seeing where it goes and then changing once uh, we learn and we get feedback from the customers so I think it's really like time will tell I think that's all how we'll find out Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time. Yep.